A good Bible question needs an August answer. My name is Carl Coates and I'm from Wooden Cross Bible Fellowship here in Trondheim in Norway. Welcome to question number 10. The question today is, are saints still sinners? I repeat that, are saints still sinners? Now, to me, when I look at that, 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 that just boosts brightness. It's such a bright question that at first glance, it's like, whoa, whoa. It's, it's, it's a brilliant question. And I think the bestest way to, to approach this, you know, being a former yachty myself, now yachty is someone that works on the super yachts and in the yachting world. When we used to walk on the decks to polish the, uh, you know, to clean the decks and polish the steel and, you know, um, polish up the decks and all that stuff. We used to wear sunglasses and in particular polarized sunglasses. Now, what did the polarized sunglasses do for me when I was working on the boats? They cut the glare off so I could actually look at the boat and or well, the surface where I was cleaning. And I could focus in on it easily. If I took my glasses off, it was too bright and I, and it, and, and I had to squint and I, I just couldn't get the job done properly. It's the same with this question. This, this question, figuratively speaking, is so bright that if you don't put your figurative sun, polarized Oakley sunglasses on and look at this question, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to tackle it like we ought to. To get that answer, that'll, that'll equip a believer and help them understand this. Because this is a real question that, for me, tripped me up for a long time. Now, I've looked at this question, I've studied up, I've prayerfully gone ahead with my, my exegesis of this. I've prayerfully looked and I've meditated a few days on it. Uh, there was a time where I was going to record and I thought, no, I'm just... I need to think about this a bit more. And as I thought on it more, uh, and, and obviously uh, being in the scripture, you know, different verses popped out. And I'm glad I didn't rush into it. I took my time to answer this one. And I can only submit to you, the gentle listener, my current level of understanding. Now, am I flip-flop about it? Am I like, oh, you know, maybe it is this or maybe it's not? No, I'm preaching for a verdict here. I'm telling you that this, what I'm about to submit to you, I, I'm currently, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that my answer is, is on the right track. And you know what? I've, I've understood in ministry that if a, if, if a preacher stands up and says something, there is always going to be some other preacher, whether it be a denominational preacher or a grace believer, that will stand up and say, hey, I see things differently. <laughs> That's a fact. That's, that's the, uh, there, there's just no two ways about it. So I'm going to submit to you my current level of understanding. And um, I do, I'm going to try to do it in, in, a, in a manner that's loving. I'm going to do it in a manner that's, um, that's firm. And, and at the end of it, and, and please, I ask you, I beg you, I beseech you, please listen to the end. This is important, especially if you've just recently been saved. Because this, this will help your thinking. Okay, and this is an issue that I battled with for a long time. Now, who am I in the grander scheme of things? Well, in reality, I'm a member of the church, the body of Christ. Uh, I'm a co, I'm a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ, just like you are if you if you if you're in in Christ, and that's awesome. So I can just submit to you. I'm nobody special in the grace movement. Um, uh, I'm, I can just be a help of your joy, really, like many faithful men have been for me. So let's let's get into this. Okay, so um, one more quick thing before I get into it. You know, if you look at this question, are saints still sinners? I'm not going to acquiesce to the fact that it's just a, a simple yes or a simple no. Acquiesce, that's a beautiful word. That's, I say, old chap, old bean, that's a rather expensive. Expensive word. You know, if my dad heard me say acquiesce, he would, he would, I think he'd be astonished for an hour sitting there going, oh my, oh my goodness me, did my son just say that? I'll have to repent. I thought he was just a mere oxygen thief. You know, I'm only joking, but I can just picture my dad thinking along those lines. My son's using a rogue thesaurus. Oh, good golly, what's going on? Anyway, enough joking around, but um, yeah, acquiesce, beautiful word. I cannot acquiesce to the fact that it's just a simple yes or no. And I submit to you, gentle listener, that this is a double-edged answer. It's a yes and a no. But allow me to explain. Do you have a Bible there? I hope so, because we are going to run a few verses. And 
go gentle on yourself. This is this is this is a lot to take in and to absorb. It is. I'll be frank about it. It is. It's it's a lot. But let, let's get into it. Okay, so once again the question, are saints still sinners? Okay, so let's now that we've got our polarized glasses on, we can cut the brilliance off that question. Now we can actually focus in on the question. Are saints still sinners? Now who's a saint? Well, I'll submit to you this. If you go to the book of Romans, which is the foundational book for any believer today, and um, in fact, there is no and ums. It just, it is. It's the milk doctrine. It's the basic foundational book that it, any and every believer needs to go to. If you go to chapter one, Paul, Paul, look what Paul says here. If we go to verse seven. In fact, verse six, we'll go from there. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? Verse 7, here it is. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Isn't that a called to be saints? So if you're in Christ, you are a saint. Now come with, let, let's go one book over. Go one book over to the right. Come with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, we'll go from verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that <clears throat> in every place that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both theirs and ours. Isn't that amazing? Saints. Mm. Let's, now let's just skip over to, let's go to the next book of doctrine. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, if you will. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, if you are, if you've trusted that Jesus Christ, if you, okay, if you've trusted the finished work of Christ, number one, you recognize and realize that you were a sinner. Number two, that there was a free gift of eternal life through the, through the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ hanging on Calvary's cross, shedding his blood, dying, being buried, and rising in the third day. If you just simply understand you're a sinner, believe that there, there's eternal life, a free gift of, uh, uh, through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. If you just simply believe that you are that, that nanosecond, you, you believe that. You become a new creature. You become a saint. You become a member of the church, the body of Christ. So a saint is somebody that's trusted and rests in the finished work of Calvary's cross in the, in the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I remember a good while ago listening to uh, a faithful brother preaching um, and he brought up the issue of there's a few different views on sainthood. And I remember taking notes down and I'm very glad I did because it's it certainly helped my thinking to answer this question today. Um, you know, there's that the whole Roman Catholic view on sainthood. You know, uh, those canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, you know, they they got a, during life that you got to qualify for that according to the Roman Catholic Church. You got to meet a certain criteria, um, and then only after once you've snuffed it, once you've popped your clogs, once you've died physically here, you you could be declared a saint. That's a Roman Catholic view. Now, what we've just read in Scripture proves that 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 view is incorrect. The next one, um, the next view would be that whole issue, that that view of, hey man, it's not really, it's not really cool to call someone a saint today, um, because we still st struggle with the flesh, and uh, you know we, you know we still sin this side of eternity, and you know, you know, it's that whole piety view, okay, so. Yeah, mm, yeah. According to what we just read in in the scriptures and Paul's epistles, view number two. That's just not true, man. You can't run on that. And then the view number three that um, that that came up was saints are the body of Christ. Everybody. It's it, it's not dispensationally considered. Um, you know, if you go through the through the through the Bible, you read about saints. In a couple of different places, you know, there's such a thing as a kingdom saint, um, which are, which will, you know, how do I explain that? A kingdom saint, someone that was a part of the little flock that's going to be resurrected into the millennial kingdom and beyond. 
Those are saints. And then there's us as members of the church, the body of Christ. And then uh, in Jude chapter 4, verse 4, sorry, not chapter 40, verse 14, it also reversed, refer, uh, refers to the angelic beings too. So, you know, there's a couple of different views you've got to look at this, you know. there's, um, And I'll just say this, where I heard this uh, was from a brother from Michigan, a guy by the name or a pastor by the name of Brian Ross. He ran a, oh, this is going back to 2019. He, I, I can't remember what study it was, but I learned that from this brother. So um, I just, I'm, I'm very glad I wrote that stuff down, you know, because it certainly, it helped me and I, I trust it helps you. So th that issue of saints, you and I as believers are saints. Okay. Now, now, now the next thing, um, the next thing, in fact, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. Early on, I was uh, we, we, I was saying to you that it, this is a double-edged answer, and um, I wish I'd said this in the beginning. So, backing up, how to understand a question like this? If you understand who your apostle is, and it's Paul today in this dispensation of grace, if you understand that your uh, if your that your apostle is Paul, you'll understand that his books are Romans to Philemon. If you understand that. And you start in the book of Romans, you'll learn some things. Chapter 1, you'll learn about man's ruin. Chapter 2, you learn about God's uh, righteous judgment. Chapter 3, you know, especially from verse 21, you, you're reading about, but now. Uh, in, uh, you know, and you read about how we are justified, basically. You go to chapter 4, chapter 5. And then chapter 6, 7, and 8 speaks of our identity. So the issue is, if you rightly divide the word of truth, you'll know who your apostle is. Once you've established who your apostle is and what he wrote to you, Romans to Philemon, then you can start digging in his epistles and finding truths out. And they laid out doctrine, reproof, correction, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. That design is laid out in Paul's epistles. So Romans is a book on doctrine. 6, 7 and 8 teaches you about your identity in Christ. So basically this question, are, are saints still sinners? You need to go into the book of Romans and and six seven and eight go through those a hundred times find preachers that are the grace preachers that have preached on it and give give them lend them your ear listen to what they have to say anyway so i just uh, uh, i thought i'd back up and just mention it again the answer to this to this question uh if you rightly divide the word of truth you're going to get a you're going to get in inverted commas the correct answer if you don't rightly divide the word of truth you're going to be all around the houses and you're going to come out with a royal duck curry fat carrot wrong answer and that's not that's not what you want to you don't want to end up with that okay so um who's a sinner what, what what's a sinner okay well um you know what eh? i went to a dictionary isn't that amazing a dictionary help a simpleton like me I went to a dictionary, I went to Noah Webster's, a sinner, uh, the first point, it's a noun, first point that Noah Webster brought up, one that has voluntarily violated divine law, a moral agent who has vol voluntarily disobeyed any divine precept or neglected any known duty. Point two, it is used in contradistinction to saint to denote an unregenerate person. One who has not received the pardon of his sins. So there, that's Noah Webster telling us about a sinner. I like the way he says, one that has voluntarily violated. That's important. We'll get to that now. So now, we've understand, now we understand who a sinner is. We understand what a saint is, who a saint is. And the big issue in answering this question, know who you are. You are a saint. If you've trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, in his death, him hanging on that cross, shedding his blood, the Son of God hanging on that cross, the sinless Jesus Christ our Lord on the cross, shedding his blood, he dies, he gets buried and he rises again the third day. If you realize that you're a sinner and that he died for your sins and you receive that as a free gift of eternal life, and just, but, but, but only by a one-time response of faith. Just the one time. 
immediately you're a saint. You're, you're a new creature. You're a member of the church, the body of Christ. So the issue with this question is, you've got to know who you are. So I'm going to submit to you now. You're a saint if you've trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Okay, you're a saint. You've moved. Your standing is you no longer a sinner. Now we're gonna we're gonna dig we're gonna dig a bit more into this. Okay, you are your your standing is you are a saint. Romans six will tell you that you're dead. In fact, let me. I've got a Bible here. Let me just turn to Romans chapter six. Romans chapter 6, so that you can hear it from God's word and not just from me trying to pretend something here. Romans chapter 6, um, verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Right, there's another verse here. Um, let me just find it now. Verse 8, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Um, verse 11, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 16, no, you, okay, well, we'll just leave it there. So you dead, that old man is dead. You know, go back up to verse 4, wherefore? Sorry, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Um, yeah, so you dead. Your old man is dead. For me, Carl Coates, the old Carl Coates, he died. I'm a saint now. I'm not a sinner in in, in the way of my standing. Okay. So I th if you, if okay, get that into your thinking, right? Now, the issue now now, now that I'm a saint, okay. Now I'm I'm just going to look at my life now. Now that I'm a saint, does that mean that I don't sin? Does that mean that I'm that I've got sinless perfection? No, it doesn't. But let's look a little bit closer. When does a saint sin? When, so, so how does this whole thing work? Okay, I'm a saint. When does he sin? Well, there's a couple of verses we need to go to. Come with me to the book of James. The book of James. Okay, there, there, there's like a process that takes place. James. And, I, and this really helped my thinking. James chapter... Uh, we go to verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Verse 15, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Okay, so there's a process that happens there. Now, um, come with me to 1 John. I'm going to take you to another passage here. 1 John chapter 2. Now, we'll leave that one for now. We'll leave that one for now. We'll get back to that. So, you, um, you're drawn away. Okay, so... This is how it works. There's the, the present, and I'm going to give an illustration from, from my life. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a funny illustration. Uh, I've thought a lot about it, and I, and I hope it will help. But there, there's, there's a couple of steps here. Number one, there's the presentation. Number two, there's the illumination. Then there's number three, the killer, is the debate. And number four, there's a decision that takes place. And number five, there's the end result. Okay. Now, before I get into that whole presentation, and I'm going to share a, 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 um, an illustration with you. Evil thinking always comes before sin. You don't just sin. Okay. There's a thinking process that goes before it. Uh, come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to take you to verse 5, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that, is, that exalteth, exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Keep that in your thinking now. Okay, there's, there's a thinking process that goes before sin. Okay, you don't just sin. So, let me give you a... a, a um, 
a real life presentation. It, it, you know, there's a bit of there's a little bit there's a little bit of figure of speech in here. Um, it's a bit of figurative. Uh, yeah, you got. You, there's a bit of funniness in this. Just well, I'll leave it like that. Okay. There was a time in my in my life where I was I can consider myself a, a walking beer bottle with a surfing problem. Okay, I grew up in the east coast of South Africa, hour and a half south of Durban, and uh, I grew up in a in a small town, very good waves, Indian Ocean. So I grew up in the surfing fraternity, right? Uh, and unfortunately, with that came a lifestyle of well, it was a lifestyle I chose really of, hey, you know, every, every, every good thing you do deserves a beer at the end of the day. You know what I mean? You got you got to celebrate every, you know, we, we, we would celebrate the the opening of an envelope. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, there was always beer involved. Always, always, always. So that's where I came from. That's where I come from. So there I am. Now, here's an illustration, a typical example. I would walk into a pub, right? I walk into a pub. And I sit down at the pub, I order myself a beer, like I did. Get yourself a beer. So there, you know, I've walked in, there's the present, there's the fridge in front of me full of all the different beer makes. There's all the whiskey on the top shelf, the brandy, the vodka, the, the everything, okay? Sambuca, you name it, it's all there. So there's the presentation of it. So what do I do? I look at it and I decide I want a beer. I order myself a beer. Is that a sin? No. I take a sip. Is that a sin? No. But here's the problem. While I'm while I'm putting a hey, while I'm putting that nice beer a hey, putting it onto my lips, my putu smackers, as I put glug, 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 as I'm far I put the put the juice a hey, I'm making a hey, fooling myself nicely with the beer and I'm feeling good. And as the good feeling starts to overtake, amen. I think to myself, ish. What's that noise I'm hearing? And I'm hearing my favorite song come on the radio or the, the hi fi, the whatever, the, the sound system. And I can hear the air, and some noise. I can hear Michael Jackson's bad come on. I'm bad. I'm bad. You know that song? Hey, I can hear that beat going. Uh, it goes something along those lines. Anyway, so I hear Mark Jackson come on. Hey, now the beer is making me feel happy. And then I start getting drawn away. The the illumination of this whole thing. Hey, one beer, that's fun. Hey, then old little Jimmy sitting down the other end of the bar. Hey, Carl, how's it? Carl, hey, Coatsman. <whistles> Smoke another topic, sir. Which in translated means, would you like another drink? I tune in one time, bro. Bring it along. So little Jimmy buys me another pint there. Hey, now I've got two pints. Hey, I put the pint. <whistles> hey, now... Now, Mark Jackson's bad song is starting to really sound good. And I'm feeling good. So the whole illumination, you know, the beer, the vibe, the, just and the people start pulling in there and it's just awesome. And then there's that debate that comes in. Hey, you know, I've had two beers. I know that if I have any more beer, um, you know, I'm going to say something, to, something wrong to somebody or I'm going to, do something, you know, I might step on someone's toes, I don't know. And there's that debate that starts, hey, should I have another one, bro? And lo and behold, that old school friend walks in down the other end of the bar, he chews me, Coats! Hey, my bro, you smoke another topic, eh? Would you like another drink? Hey, of course, bro. So from the debate, I'm de now I'm scheming, hey, you know, should I, should I, should I not? Hey, maybe I should, maybe. Hey. Ah, you know what, eh? Yeah, yeah. I'll take that one. Thanks. So I take the third drink, right? Hey, I put the put the drink to my putu to my putu, eh? Hey, my putu smack ass, hey, and I'm glug glug glug. <sharp inhale> hey, putting nicely. Hey, I'm feeling good, eh? Now that Michael Jackson song comes to an end, and the next Jacko song comes up, eh? Hey, the next beat comes, eh? Hey, bro, Billy Jean, Billy Jean comes on, right? So now. I've passed the debate, I've given in, now I'm feeling inebriated, I'm feeling loose, I'm runny on scones, I'm now a little bit drunk. You know, so have I violated the righteousness of God? Absolutely. See, now, 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 now what happens, this is the interesting part, this is, 
This is the overtness of, of sin here. So now I'm lacquer on, bro. I'm on, bro. Now the problem is, I'm listening to the next song that uh, Billy Jean, that's my lover, and I get up now and I'm feeling good to go. I get on the dance floor and now I'm bursting, boosting these moves on the dance floor, feeling good. And I'm boosting like this and I'm doing my thing. And uh, lo and behold, I step on Elvis Presley's blue suede shoes. Now the problem is, problem is, Elvis has already told me, don't step on my blue suede shoes. Okay. Now the problem gets worse. It's Elvis is the king of rock and Michael Jackson is the king of pop and I'm doing the jig jig to the Michael Jackson king of pop. Elvis the king of rock doesn't like this and I've stepped on his blue suede shoes. Right. Now you must also remember, Elvis was a black belt in karate. So now Elvis is cross with me because I stepped on his blue suede shoes because I'm nice and runny on scones. I've stepped on his shoes. I've dirtied his shoes. And he delivers a nice karate chop. He slaps the coatsman. Coatsman looks at him, gets angry. The coatsman climbs into Elvis Presley. Oh, and it just turns into a big dog show. Big boxing match. Hey, nose is broken. Blood everywhere. Anger. Have I violated the standard of God's righteousness? Overt sin. Absolutely. What's what's the result? Well, my my walk has just crumbled. Anybody that knows me as a member of the Church of the Body of Christ can just go, "Jeez, look at that guy." You know what I mean? And then God gets blessed. His name gets blasphemed. So you get the picture. Now, that whole debate thing. You know, when you're debating, you know, should should I have had that third beer? You can look at passages like First Corinthians six twelve. Romans 6.14, and you can get the idea. Now, also, I, early on I read to you 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, that, that evil thinking, bro. You know what I mean? Um, it's a tough one because, in fact, it's not a tough one. It's an easy one. I should have brought that. I should have gone, hey, I've had two beers. That's enough. I, I don't need to have any more. In fact, I don't even need to be in this establishment. And and have I preached the gospel? Have I, have I shared shared the good news with anybody? No. So what have I done? Blaspheme the name of God by fighting, giving that Elvis a slap. It's just gone all pear-shaped. And um, so that's an illustration. I know there's a bit of funny in there and all that, but uh, that's, that's the reality. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, there's those, there's that covert sin. Okay. You might not be the pub guy. You might just be little Joe Soap. That um, that goes to the gym for the first time, right? And 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 this happened to me. Um, this happened to me too. So I can speak from experience. You go to the gym for the first time. There you are. You walk in, and um, if you've got your Bibles there, turn with me to Matthew chapter five. Turn with me to Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter 5, and I think some of you know exactly where I'm going with this. Matthew chapter 5, if you will. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Okay. So you walk into the gym, and you go to the training room. You get changed, you put your, 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 your cross trainers on, and you've got your sweatband on, and you're all amped, and you got your, you, you know your, what you need to do because you've just had a personal trainer show you what to do the, you know, a couple of days before um, so that when you walk in the gym, at least you've got a plan and a program to work to. And you walk into the gym and lo and behold, would you believe that there's a host of different women in there and their apparel. Just you take one look and and yes, you don't know whether to look at your toes. You don't know whether to look at the ceiling because they are dressed in such a way. I mean, it's just uh, it can make a man's mind drift. Now, come with me to, to um, and ladies, it's the same for you too. You know, you might see Popeye the Sailor Man, and you, 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 you this could be, apply to you too. But um, uh, Matthew chapter 5, 27, Jesus says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But look what Jesus says there. He says, that, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust, or lust after hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You see, to lust after it. Now, to look at that woman or those ladies in those tight suits, you know, as a man, it's, it's um, 
You know, you can look at it, but you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to turn away and to focus on what you're doing. Now, Jesus said to lust after. What did he say there? Um, to lust after. Now, if any bloke stands and just stares and lusts and his mind goes wild, and the same for you ladies, if you see Popeye or, 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 or uh, whatever character there and, and, he, and he, he captures your imagination, you know, if you lust after, so just looking at them and seeing them, that, that, that presentation of them, you know, um, that's not a sin. It's when you get drawn away and you start to lust after. That's when the sin starts. That's when the debate starts. Now, in the case of standing in the gym and looking at those 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 incredible, incredible shapes, etc., you know, there's the debate and then there's that overt getting drawn away and that 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 lusting after. People, it's real, man. It's real. So understanding the presentation illumination the debate part of it and then the decision to overtly or covertly go down that path the end result is is as we read in james it, it, it just brings forth death that's how it is now this whole let me go back to the original question are saints still sinners well that's not a yes and it's not a no it's a yes no are saints still sinners well, from a standing point of view, no, you're not a sinner. you now a saint. That is your title. You're a saint. Do you still sin like an old sinner? You, don't, you, you, uh, um, you still violate God's standard of righteousness because you've got, a, you got, your, old, you got your, your old ways of thinking. And it's not a light switch that just turns off. It's, it's a renewing of the mind. You've got to constantly go into the Word of God and renew your mind. And it, what it boils down to is your con you, as you read Paul's epistles and as you grow and build your inner man and as you, as you, as you really just focus on, 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 on your conduct as a son. I, love, I remember Ray Keeble you know, running through the judgment seat of Christ with me. And uh, your conduct as a son comes into play here. And... You know, when you whatever your 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 um your bent is, whatever your go to is, and and I mean, listen, folks, what 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 tri trips me up and what trips you up might be completely different things. So whatever your whatever you are faced with that you know is going to cause you to sin, cause you to think those thoughts, get to that debate place and debate, and whether it's overt or covert. Listen, man. Um, there's, there's a thing, you could just, just remember that there's your conduct as a son. You know, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 5, you know, when you, when you, as you get to that debate thing, take it to the cross. And I know that there's a lot more scriptures that I could go to and dig out and present to you. But you know, that's the beautiful thing of studying. What you hear from me today, just take it back to the scripture prayerfully and, and, and run through the stuff. Now, you know, so saints are not sinners, but saints still choose to mess up. You've got the flesh. The flesh is weak, the scripture says. The flesh is weak. And if we walk in the flesh, which is very easy, that's what, that's, 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 that's when that, when, you know, there's different types of death in the Bible, you know, and it's, uh, you, you, and that's another beautiful topic for another time. But um, yeah, de the death to your walk as a as a Christian, your service, can can happen really easily. You know. So anyway, now I heard a saying once from a faithful saint that I really, really battled with. I'm going to bring it up, um, and I'm going to give you how I understand it. Remember at the beginning of this, I said to you that uh, this is my current level of understanding when looking at this this question. Now. The quote was from, from a, a, a dear brother that I hold in high esteem, and, and it was this. You're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. Now, I looked at that for a long time, and I was absolutely confused. Confused. And, and, and let me just say this. You sin because you're a sinner. That's a statement for a believer. Now, hang on. You're not a sinner because you sin. That's a believer's statement. That's an issue of your standing. You're not a sinner.
because you sin. Just because you sin and you stuff up willingly, willingly doesn't uh, um, take you from your position, your standing in Christ and put you back in Adam. No, it doesn't. Now, the second part of that, 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 that quote is, you sin because you are a sinner. You sin because you are a sinner. I look at that and I, I say to myself, no, it's, that's not true. You sin because you choose to. And most times we've got a seared conscience. We know things are wrong and we still go down that road willingly because it's a thinking process. Because it's evil thinking pre precedes sin. You're thinking, you get to that debate and you think, think, and then you, you get drawn away and then you overt or covert, you go down that road of sin. And, and um, so you're not a sinner because you sin. That's, your, that's an issue. That's a, a statement for, a, for the believer. That's got to do with your standing. You sin because you're a sinner. If you're a believer, that's got to do with your state. And that's, that's got to do with your state. And that's also an unbeliever statement. You sin because you're a sinner. Now, dear gentle listener, if you're in Christ, you're not a sinner. So what I'm trying to say, it's always a thinking game. This is a think. To sin, you don't automatically sin. It's a, you've got a, process, a thought process beforehand. And we ran through that. Now, the verdict. What's the verdict? What's the nitty gritty here? Let's just, let's just tie this tie this all up in a nice little bundle for you okay you're not a sinner to answer the question you're not a sinner you are a saint i'm gonna say that again you're not a you're not a sinner you are a saint comma it's now an issue of your conduct not an issue of your status Gentle listener, I, I, I know we've, we, we, it's almost 40 minutes of going through here. I hope that made a lick of sense to you. Um, so I'm going to repeat the verdict, my current level of, an, uh, level of understanding. You're not a sinner. You are a saint. It's now an issue of your conduct. And, we, and you know what? Most of the time we mess up, whether it's overt or covert, we mess up. But it's a choice. It's a process there. Now you think to yourself, oh, but what about the drug addict? That's, you know, listen, it's still a choice. Some choices, you know, um, and, and it, there's those old lifestyle patterns. You know, oh, you know, for me, it was the bottle drinking. Do I still have a beer? Yes, I do. Do I, do, uh, 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 do I carry on like a wild, wild gorilla like I used to? No. Why? Because it's not who I am. It's not who we are as, as faithful saints to do that. If I was to go to the pub every day like I used to, number one, it'll kill, my, kill me financially. Number two, my wife would leave me. Number three, if I walk out the pub and get into an accident, listen, people could die and be hurt. Number four, and I think one of the most important point, if I'm lacquer Ronnie Onscons, if I'm three sheets to the wind, and I have an opportunity present itself for me to present the gospel that saves a soul today. And I'm inebriated. Do you think a person is going to listen to a drunk man give the gospel? No, they won't. And at the same time, it blasphemes the name of God. That's not, what we, that's not who we are. That's not what we ought to be doing. It gets back to the conduct as a son. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen to this. I, I trust it helped. I know it, it's a lot of information and it can be quite tricky. Go over this a few times. And, and, I, and, and in closing, if you do have any questions, leave a comment in the comment box down below, please. And um, I, 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 it's always awesome to hear from people. And, it's, and if you totally disagree with what I've said, I'm happy with that. And I would like to see what your viewpoint is to consider it. Till we meet again for question 11. You take care and Maranatha.